to do a brief review of air. We talked about how air gets in, but where it goes, where it goes, comes in either, oh, that's white, comes in either the mouth or nose, travels down the trachea into the bronchi, which way it goes is random, down into the bronchioles, again, which way it goes is random, and ends up in this little raspberry-shaped structure called an alveolus. Okay, there are 300 million in each lung, and we've talked about that before. Now, we're not going to spend a whole bunch of time talking about the alveolus, but it looks like this little raspberry-shaped structure. And with everything else in the human body, what is folding? Why is it folded like that? To do, Cody Parent. To increase the surface area. This is one cell layer thick. So that the a alveolus, the wall of an alveolus is one cell thick, which is kind of an oxymoron. It's really, really thin. And so as molecules of oxygen come in here, they can diffuse directly through the wall of the alveolus into the bloodstream. And what's not shown on here, that if you could actually see an alveolus, it's crisscrossed, it's crisscrossed with network of capillaries like this. Okay, what are capillaries? Really small blood vessels that a blood cell can go through one at a time. Yes, sir. So if we take a look at the next slide, this is a picture on page 416 in your book. And you're going to want to kind of make a note of that. This is a picture you're going to have to be able to describe in words on a test. Okay? If I give you this image on a test, you should be able to describe it in words. I'm going to give you some of the words right now. I'm going to put them all up here and let you write it down. Oops. And then uh, from there, you want to write that into your notes right now, and then we'll just talk about it in a minute. There will be a couple things you don't really understand, maybe. We'll talk about it. Pressure of oxygen. Okay, so the pressure of oxygen in your alveolus is 100 millimeters of mercury, and that's just how they use the bar That's what they measure barometer. It's barometric pressure. Okay, well, if you look at this, this doesn't show up very well here, but when you breathe air in, air, the pressure of air, in, the pressure of oxygen in air, in regular air, is about 160. By the time it gets into your alveolus and your lung, it's down to 100. Anybody have an idea of why that might be? How can you have less oxygen in your lungs already than in, in, your, in the air? Not yet. Has it diffused yet? There's already air in your lungs. Okay? There's always air in your alveoli. Otherwise, they will collapse. And when they collapse, they are moist. And so anytime you get too wet, very slippery surfaces together that like two glass slides that get wet, it's very hard to separate them. Okay? And so you always have a little bit of air in your alveolus. A quote collapsed lung is when the pressure has changed so much that the alveoli have all smacked together. And it's you have a really hard you would have a really hard time, especially since air is going into one lung anyway, getting air forcing air down into that lung, into the alveoli, because they're all, even if some of them are. Okay, so there's always air there, and you have, you're at about 100, about 100 in, in the lungs, the pressure of oxygen is about 100. Well, then as blood comes in from the body, remember there's this network of capillaries around every alveolus, that the pressure of oxygen in the lungs is 40. And you know that oxygen is going to move from high pressure to low pressure, we call it diffusion, and it's going to go into the blood. And so when blood leaves the lung, it's at 100. The pressure of oxygen is 100. Travels into the heart, the heart pumps it around the body to wherever it's got to go. 
When it gets to the cells, it's got to go to. Oxygen diffuses from the blood into the cells. Why? What must be true? Diffusion, right? There must be a higher concentration of oxygen in there than in here. What do your cells do with that oxygen? Ty? Okay, so you have to have oxygen in your cells to bring to the muscles to contract and stuff because food plus oxygen makes ATP, which is energy, correct? And the byproduct of that is CO2 and H2O. Water is no problem because we need that water. It's called metabolic water. That water stays around our cells. Any extra we get rid of uh, through our kidneys. This is a problem, carbon dioxide. We have to get rid of it. So it diffuses from our cells into the blood. Maybe I should draw that arrow in blue because we always use blue for carbon dioxide for some unknown reason. So it diffuses into the blood, travels back to the heart, gets pumped to the lungs, and now carbon dioxide, because carbon dioxide is at a higher pressure. Oh, that is blue, you just can't see it. Is at a higher pressure in the blood than in your lung. Carbon dioxide goes from the blood into your lungs. And what do you do with it? Well, you exhale. Carbon dioxide. Are there any questions about that? What I just told you all that. What I do to finish up with this slide is just talk about how how uh, oxygen is transported around your bloodstream. And maybe you already know it's transported on red blood cells, specifically hemoglobin. Correct. It's transported on hemoglobin. That's blue. Don't use blue ink on this. Hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is made of hema plus globin. <laughs> Not kidding. Globin is a protein. Hema is made of iron. Epi. There are about 150 billion molecules of hemoglobin in every drop of blood. Well, that's crazy. And so each molecule can carry, of hemoglobin can carry four oxygen molecules. So that means in one drop of blood, there are six trillion molecules of oxygen. That's pretty crazy. You don't have to write that down. That's just like one of those things that's an interesting fact because it's interesting. So when you inhale, oxygen is loaded from the alveolus into the red blood cell by diffusion, and it sticks on the hemoglobin making something called oxyhemoglobin. It's like a chemical reaction. That's why it's written like this. It's a chemical reaction, a small little bitty chemical reaction that happens to form what's called oxyhemoglobin. Hemoglobin kind of like absorbs the oxygen into it, for lack of a better way to say it. That is a uh, carbon monoxide. You ever heard of it? Yeah. Carbon monoxide is written CO. What's the problem? You don't have to write this down necessarily. This is more information. What's the problem with CO? It's deadly. It can kill you, right? It's called carbon monoxide poisoning. Why is that so much more dangerous than carbon dioxide? Cody, what do you think? Is it because um, it has less oxygen, so it takes the oxygen? No. Something about its chemical structure makes it? Bonds with hemoglobin. Bonds with hemoglobin better than oxygen. So you're, walking, you're sitting in your car and it's running and you're breathing in carbon monoxide, and the carbon monoxide you're inhaling kicks oxygen off the hemoglobin and takes its place, which is bad for you 
because when that gets to your cells, it doesn't unload any oxygen, so your cells start running out of oxygen, especially in your brain. So we say it has a greater affinity. I like this word, so I like writing it. Chemically, chemically, carbon monoxide will bond with hemoglobin better than oxygen. So it just boots it up. So even though you're breathing plenty of oxygen, it's not getting stuck on the hemoglobin, not getting traveling around your body. So if you have carbon monoxide poisoning, you have to be taken to the hospital, they put you on 100% oxygen. And the reason they do that is because now, instead of having, now let's say you triple the amount of oxygen in your lungs, now that, that creates a high pressure of oxygen coming in and can start re, I guess, oxygenating your hemoglobin. But it takes a while because of the chemistry of it. You can't just give somebody a drug to get rid of carbon monoxide. Does that make sense? Okay. So write this about carbon dioxide and then we'll be done. We'll use it tomorrow for more of an explanation. Carbon dioxide is transported in the blood as, actually, I have bicarbonate ion here. Technically, it's as carbonic acid. And so it lowers the pH of your blood, makes it more acidic. That's really important when we talk about control of respiration tomorrow.